Hello Jamf admins, today I'm going to go over the Mass Update Tool, or MUT for short. This is a tool created by Mike Levenick back in 2016 and it's part of the Jamf Concepts webpage. So when this was, tool was released in 2016, I was on the field services team doing what was formerly known as Jump Starts for new clients at Jamf. And this tool was a godsend for us because at that time we had a very limited scope of work and we couldn't show companies how to bash script or do anything with the Jam Pro API. So if they wanted to do any type of mass updates, say add asset tags to all their computers, we finally had a tool that we could easily direct them to in order to do those types of operations. Since that time, he's made a lot of updates to those tools based on new things you can do with the Jamf API and just improvements to the tool itself. So we want to go into some of the changes that were made and what you can do with this tool. So to get started, uh, download the MUT and open it here. And you have to log in with a username and password. Um, I'm going to use a full administrator for this demonstration, but you can have limited privileges, which is listed in the documentation. Once you log in, it's going to ask you to download CSV templates. So I'll download those and then we can take a look at them. Okay. So first we're going to go over the computer template. So this is what you use if you want to update computers that are already enrolled into Jamf. So here's a bunch of things that you need to define um, in order to get this to work. Now, what I'm going to do is download all the serial numbers for my test Jamf server and then put them into the C CSV computers, search inventory, and just do a quick search and then export these values. Now I'm just going to pick a couple computers that I want to change. Um, and I'm going to focus on the serial number. As I do this, I'm aware of which serial numbers I'm doing. So a lot of things I can change here. I can add an asset tag. So I'll one, do one, two, three, four for this, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, and four, five, six, seven. I can also add a username here. So I'll do Chris at rocketman.tech, Caleb at rocketman.tech, Hugo at rocketman.tech, and Chad at rocketman.tech. I can also, um, so I can update all this information if I wanted to, building department, lots of things, but I can also update an extension attribute. So in order to do that, uh, let's go into Jamf Pro and look at one of the extension attributes. So I created one for this demonstration called nickname. Um, the main thing you want to look at is the ID for this. That um, you can find in the address bar. What I want to do is EA underscore 41. That will allow me to update this. So I can give us all nicknames. Shasta is one of mine. Grades for Caleb, Hugo Not for Hugo, and Tink Er Er for Chad. So I filled in this information. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then I can close out of this. And then let me go back to the MUT, which is behind this window. I'm going to browse for filled out CSV. So I want to go to that MUT template. This is the one that I edited and then open it. It'll show me here what I'm changing just so I can check to make sure that this all looks correct. And then once I'm ready, click submit updates. So those updates are complete. Now, if I go back and search for my inventory, I'll see that all these things have been added. The asset tag, um, the username, and then also these nicknames that I did. One thing I want to note here is this computer name. And I'm not going to do this as an example. Um, actually, I can. Let me go back here and I'm going to update one of these computer names. So open up this CSV again. I'll just change this display name to test. So right now, my computer name is set to Chris Production. And this is going to change it to test. But let me show you how this works within Jamf Pro and the MUT. So if I open this up, you 
submit these updates. You're going to see in here that my computer name for my computer is now changed to test within Jamf Pro. However, if we open up terminal, I'll refresh it because you'll need to do that to get the computer name. My computer name is still set to Chris Production. Now, the problem with this is it's just updating the record inside of Jamf. It's not going to actually send a command to update it on the computer. And if I was to do sudo Jamf recon and do another recon command, it's going to set that computer name in Jamf back to the original one. So this is really just a temporary fix. It's not going to actually change your computer name. You'll need a little bit more robust workflow to do that. And as you see here, once I refresh this, this has been changed back to Chris Production. Now if I go back to the MUT and submit these updates again, I'm going to show you how you would utilize this to actually change the computer name. So this is back to test. Now what I need is a policy inside of Jamf Pro um, to reset the computer name. Once I do this, I can put my computer in, in scope of that. I'm gonna go ahead and flush the logs because I was testing this before. And if I do a pseudo Jamf policy, it'll run this. And then you see here, it's still set to Chris production, but if I go back here and relaunch terminal, now it's called test. Um, however, I don't really recommend doing this because even if you set up a policy to do this, let's say you had a thousand computers, if any of those computers were to update their inventory before this policy was deployed, it would retain the old computer name. So there's much better ways to do this, either through scripts or other tools. We have a tool that can do that as well, um, but just wanted to make note of that. So that's updating the computer name. Oh, one more thing I want to note about this. So um, a lot of people like to think they can use the MUT as like an organization tool. Um, however, it has one main caveat that um, really limits it and that it only works with computers currently enrolled in Jamf. So if you want to organize computers before they're enrolled in Jamf, there's actually a better tool built into that and that's called inventory preload. So this specifically is for computers not enrolled in Jamf. You can upload a CSV file and do basically all the same operations that they're doing in MUT, but as soon as the computer gets enrolled, it'll get that information. However, I would say the best way if you're gonna organize your information from a uh, you know future-proofing standpoint, just long-term, is to use some type of directory service. So the users will enter in their directory credentials, either through SSO or just straight through LDAP, and it will automatically fill in their building and department and everything else they need, so you can put them into smart groups and stuff like that. That's typically the best way, you know, long term to organize your devices. But um, inventory preload, along with the MUT, can be used in kind of one-time circumstances to organize your devices in different ways. So that's my little thing on the computer template. This is probably the main thing within the MUT and it's what the MUT was originally built on. Um, and I also wanna show you the mobile device template, which is a little bit different, but very similar. So if I go inside of here, this is gonna look exactly the same. I'm not gonna go through a demonstration of this. Uh, the only thing I want to note is that the display name, which is the mobile device name, functions a little bit different here. This will actually send a command, um, like an MDM command through Jamf Pro using some of Jamf Pro's logic that it can do because it can actually enforce mobile device names. Um, and that will change the de device name on the device itself. So this is a great way to change your mobile device names after they're enrolled. Um, unlike computers where that method doesn't really work that well for changing uh, computer names, it's better to do that through some type of script or other tool. Next, I wanna show you groups and pre-stages. Now this is actually a newer feature and the thing I end up using a lot more um, through the MUT uh, to do stuff because it allows you to put devices into pre-stages or put them into you know, a specific static group. Um, this works both for computers and mobile devices. Um, let me show you how this looks. 
right now, I have all my devices in this default pre-stage and I've created this MUT pre-stage just for this example and there are zero devices in it. So let's take a look at putting some of the, my the devices into the MUT pre-stage. So I'm gonna grab a couple serial numbers. I'll just go ahead and save that. Now let's open the MUT. And there's really no way to go back here, so I have to close it and reopen it and reauthenticate. But now I'm going to open up this mobile device or this, um, sorry, groups and pre stages template. Now you'll notice in this template, I didn't define anything except for just the serial numbers that I want to update. So this is a little bit different. There's not much information here, but I'm going to get more options once I upload it. So let's go into the MUT. I'm going to open this up. It's going to select me which record I want to update. So I can do all these different options. Right now I'm going to show you a pre-stage. Now I can add, remove, or replace existing pre-stage. Now in my testing, I was not able to get replace to work. So what I'm going to actually do is remove it from the first pre-stage and then add it to the second pre-stage. So this pre-stage has an ID of one. Uh, you can see that in the address bar right here. So I'm going to add one here and I'm going to do the pre-flight and preview changes. Um, and then it will do just a quick test to make sure everything's good and then submit those updates. And now you'll see it says it successfully ran. And if I go back here and refresh this page, I should see that those three devices have now been removed from this pre-stage. So now I'm going to add it to the next pre-stage. That pre-stage has a number of two. And you can see that by going to this pre-stage and looking in the menu bar. So now you'll see that Right now they're all unchecked, but if I refresh the screen, those devices are now checked. Now that's a great way to organize either computers or mobile devices before they're enrolled, especially if they need different pre-stages because of different configurations that they need. Uh, so next, this is probably gonna be the thing I use the MUT for the most, and it's putting devices into specific groups. So let's say I wanted to put these three devices into a static group called the MUT pilot. In this situation, you might be um, working with a client or someone on your team wants you to um, deploy a piece of software to a specific group of devices that they define. Maybe they just send you a serial number and they're like, hey, I need you to set up this workflow and we're gonna pilot it with these devices. Static groups are amazing for that. They should not be main organizational units, but they can be used to create a quick pilot or a quick test group or just any type of one-off group like that. So I can use this same template that I used before. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log in here, browse for that same template. But now instead of adding it to a computer pre-stage, I'm gonna do a computer static group. Then I'm gonna add it to the group. And the group ID, again, I'm gonna get by just opening this object and then seeing, okay, it's 35. Enter that in there. Everything looks good. Let's submit those updates. And now you'll see, once I refresh this page, three of those computers are now assigned to this pre-stage. You can also remove it from that static group as well. And then you'll see those are removed from that static group. So lastly, uh, we wanna look over making changes to users. Now users are kind of interesting in Jamf Pro. Now we often think of users as uh, being assigned to a computer by a username, and that is a user within Jamf Pro. You also got all your directory users, which Jamf really just queries from that as soon as you assign a computer or mobile device to that group. So, but there is a users area within Jamf Pro, which a lot of people don't know about. And what this is, is a database of all the users that are assigned to all your computers in Jamf Pro. You can also create users that aren't assigned to any computers. Also, if you assigned a thousand users to a thousand different computers 
and then you removed them from there for some reason, they're still going to exist in this users area. So it's kind of its own database. Um, and sometimes that can be cool. And also other times it can create some weird issues, but something to note as you're trying to make changes to this. So let's open up this user template. So it has the current username and then the new username, and then you can fill in the rest of the information. Um, so let's say I wanted to change, um, we got, I, I, want, I said, okay, the current username is going to be um, Chris at Rocketman, and I wanted to change it to, let's say, Alfred at Rocketman. Uh, I'll just go ahead and save that. So what will happen is it will make the change that this username will now be Alfred. So let's take a look at that. Again, I have to close out of this so I can go into a different pane. Then you can see the changes there. I'm going to submit the updates. Once I go ahead and do that here, we can now see that nothing else has changed except the username here. I actually misspelled Rocket Man, but that's fine. Now let's say I wanted to change it to a username that was already in here. I want to point this out because it doesn't work. So it has to be a username that doesn't exist already. So I'm trying to change this one to Hugo, which is an account that already exists here. Um, so I need to close out of this again, reopen it. Now it says it works, but if I go ahead and refresh the screen, it doesn't actually do anything. So it can't re like exchange a current username for one that already exists. It can just make changes to it if it doesn't already exist. So that's a quick rundown of how the MUT works. Now the bigger question is, who is this tool for? Now this can, tool can be used in a variety of situations for a variety of organizations, but we often see it used mostly in schools and universities. Um, but I've used it across the board with all kinds of clients, um, especially because being able to update that static group is a useful tool. So I would say this is kind of used across all organizations of all sizes and different use cases.